Thanks very much for the opportunity to talk today. And one of the best things about being in the sort of later sessions is you can really sort of touch on some of the themes and things that have come up first, sort of, you know, in those first few sessions. And it was a real reminder, sort of listening to Wendy and Carolyn talking earlier about, I suppose, how long I've been involved with the collections from the Egypt Centre. Uh, we're here to celebrate sort of 25 years. Um, Carolyn reminded us that it's actually been longer than 25 years. I've been involved for well over 30 years now with the, the collections through my work at the university. Um, the second session, the sort of archiving and collections and the work that Sam has been doing with sort of Abbasek collections, it's a great resource for our students working on the objects to be able to sort of look online and see all that information there, um, you know, and have the contact with people like Ken to sort of get that information about the objects. And again, then the session, hearing about our colleagues at Swansea University, the way they work with the collections and, you know, using objects in that way. And again, it's how we teach our students. It's a very hands-on subject conservation and that sort of hands-on teaching of conservation, working very closely with the objects themselves. So in this talk, I'm just going to share a bit of the, the sort of history of the objects we've worked on and um, some of the things that we've done and the work we've carried out over the years. And first off, just a quick bit about conservation at Cardiff University. We offer four degrees, three of those at Masters, and the ones where the students get to work on objects are the sort of BSc and the MSc in conservation practice, the BSc conservation of museums and objects and archaeology. Um, Christian mentioned Katie Morton earlier. She's just started the Masters at Cardiff, the conservation practice, and she's the latest in a line of students who've worked with objects at the Egypt Centre, really sort of gain that, that thrill of working with objects and then um, go on to sort of think, you know what, I'm going to work with objects in a hands-on way and sort of at Cardiff. So the Egypt Centre is 25 years old. Well, some time ago, Ken sort of got me to look back at some of the objects he knew had come to Cardiff for conservation. And... They date back to 1978. So back from the days of the Welcome Collection, objects started to be sent to what was by then a pretty new course at Cardiff. We'd only be up, up and running, I think, for about four years then. And you can see here one of the very first objects coming through for conservation. Wooden figures, um, object records there, handwritten. We heard talk earlier of deciphering handwritten things. I've been sort of scanning some of these in. And this is one of the better ones, the neater ones. As you can imagine, some of these you're reading the handwriting thing in. How exactly did they treat it? What did they do? What object was it? Um, and again, you know, some of those early recording techniques, the photographs we took. When we were looking at things, black and white imaging was often how we took photographs. And I remember even as a student, we were processing our own films and processing our own prints in dedicated dark rooms. Those dark rooms are now computer labs where people process the digital images they've taken. Times change, but the recording of the information still goes on in that way. So looking at some of the things that were done, we've seen some of the textiles, uh, the metal keys, the metal objects, decorated plaster and statuary. And what I'm going to do is, you know, look at some of the things throughout the sort of 80s and 90s and some of the more recent objects that students have been working on as well. A bit of an update over the past few years through our sort of uh, work with the Egypt Centre, students have been able to present on their work. So give more regular updates and show an insight into the conservation that's been going on. I'm going to show some of the older stuff maybe that hasn't been seen yet. This stone staler, it's... Um, a good indication of one of those things where past conservation treatments done with good intent sometimes don't have the effects that they want. Mm -hmm. So this is an object that came in and the surface had originally been crumbling a bit. Back in the day, they'd applied a consolidant to the surface. And when it came into us, one of the issues we had was that consolidant itself was starting to peel away and pull the surface away with it. So the conservation treatment that at the time was put on to preserve the object is in fact leading to further damage and accelerated damage now. And you can see here, um, 
you can see the detail, but you can see the sort of damage that's being done in terms of that crumbling surface and that that's coming away. So what the student had to do was identify what the material was. How am I going to remove this? So using analysis, she identified it was probably some sort of um, PVA, polyvinyl acrylate, and a warm water would gradually remove that. Unfortunately, the damage has already been done to the surface. So in removing some of that film, some of that surface is coming away with it. But very carefully, she was able to remove the film and then consolidate again the surface that's still there with an adhesive that um, is more stable long term and we have better sort of tested properties on. And it's one of the things in terms of conservation, it's being aware of the materials that you're using. Some of these effects we only learn through time. Again, previous treatments. This is a large vessel uh, that came in and it had been treated, um, put together, infilled gaps with plaster, plaster fill. The plaster fill was actually spread over quite a bit of the surface and hiding some of the decoration. It also had a lot of plaster on the inside to give it strength. The downside was that plaster actually added a lot of weight to the object as well. And so you're sort of always striking that balance between strengthening the object, but adding so much weight that actually on one way, you, you can be making it more fragile. The old adhesive was also starting to fail. And there was a real danger with this object that at some point with the weight of the plaster, the failing adhesive, that that could collapse when being handled. And so what the student did was, again, identify the adhesive. And in this case, it was much more mechanical removal of the plaster. It was trying to soften it with water, mechanically removing. And as you can see from the names on the bottom, this went through three different students. It wasn't a quick job. The first student did some of the sort of work. The second student had probably the worst part of the job in terms of taking most of the plaster off and then running out of time. The third student got the sort of slightly better bit in tidying up a bit and actually getting to put it back together. And you can see here, putting it back together, they've left the gaps. There was no real need for the plaster. While the plaster sort of did fill those gaps, you've still got exactly the sense of shape there. It's not needed for strength. You've got the adhesive and everything holding that together. And, you know, to be honest, having those gaps in it, it, it sort of gives you that sense of age with the object. You know, it, it sort of, I feel, adds something rather than take something away from it. Um, some of you may have seen this object before. It's a whistle that came through. And again, two students working on it because it's quite a complex project. There was a lot of work initially to carry out analysis of the materials, what was used, what adhesives were used. Actually, some of these materials that we're looking at here, they're probably original materials, this bituminous material, these sort of plant-based materials. They could be original. In that case, we don't want to be removing those. You've got to know exactly what you're looking at in order to decide what it is you're going to be doing. And so the student was able to identify which adhesives may have been original, which adhesives were definitely not original because they were sort of um, polymers, synthetic polymers, remove the synthetic polymers and put the object back together again. Another aspect of the work we do in conjunction with the Egypt Center and Swansea University itself is the work that students do in terms of analysis ties into sort of research being carried out by Swansea University researchers. And they, you know, there's opportunities and scope there for joint publications on the work that's being done. This is a mask that came in. Um, on the left, you can see it's got quite a flattened face there and a break down the center. So in the past, it has become separated, damaged, and was in two separate pieces. Second year master student, Tessa, she skillfully reshaped the face, constructing a support for it, reattaching it, and adding some areas of fill on either side to provide a bit of additional support. So it's been backed, it's on a padded mount now, and it can be either displayed or stored in that way safely. So again, it's that sort of identification of the problems, the issues, talking to the clients, to Ken, to the Egypt Center, and seeing what it is they want from the object. 
do they want an object that's going to be used in handling sessions or is it an object that's going to be on static display that impacts on how we deal with things and what we do and you know that sort of outcomes led conservation is always where we're at with these things helping to sort of shape the type of treatment that we carry out Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is one that I've talked about a lot in the past, the coffin. And um, it's one that Ken and I have a running joke with in terms of, you know, I've always said I, I've got to get this coffin out of the university before I ever retire. And <laughs> it's getting closer and closer. <laughs> so this year, as I say every year, I'm going to crack on with this. No, I've talked a lot about this object. And Wendy and Carolyn brought this in back in 98, July 98, I think it was, it's got here. 21st of July, there we go. And on arrival, it was in, let's just say, a bit of a state. I've talked about it extensively, so I'm just going to skip through and give the sort of, ooh, pictures. It's looking a lot better now. And this is the lid after conservation. The inside has all been cleaned. There's been lots of gap fill carried out to sort of strengthen that. Um, the outside has been cleaned and a lot of infill to support the textile stuck down. It all looks a lot better and is a lot more stable. The coffin isn't just the lid. There's the base as well. And that's what we've been working on for about the last 18 months. This is the base as it was got out of store. And you can see it's got lots of plastic wrapped around it. I wrapped the plastic around it 25 years ago. And in that 25 years, I forgot why I'd wrapped the plastic around. <laughs> And the student who was working on it said, oh, it looks rubbish with the plastic on. Can I take the plastic off to take a photo? I said, yeah, no problems. When the side fell off, <laughs> that's why I put the plastic on. Um, so, yeah, there, there, were, there were a few curse words said, mostly at me. So there we go. But the student has done a wonderful job. So what Angela's done with this is you can see the side completely detached. The side had detached because the wooden dowels were broken. The wooden dowels that had held the, the side, the, the, the piece on there, had uh, completely broken through. And so in discussions with Ken and the outcome being we want this as stable as possible, Angela took the decision to replace those wooden dowels and put the thing back together again. So she's put the side back on and now she's sort of realigning the textile. And that's it as it is now. You can see. The side is back on and stable. And for the first time, we were actually able to turn it over and see the underneath of the coffin as well. There's still a fair bit of work to do. A lot of that textile is loose and needs reattaching down. There's also some loose bits of textile that we've got in boxes that may well fit somewhere on there. So again, it's gonna be a bit of a puzzle putting those back on. But the aim of this year in the labs is as a group project to have that base out and get that back together. I should say that um, Ken's very good at finding bits and pieces. He's also found several bits that attach the lid, um, including part of what we think was the missing piece of the head that about five or six years ago, students infilled. So in conservation, we talk about reversibility of treatments. We're gonna be finding out how reversible our treatment was <laughs> so that we can put the original piece of wood back in. A few curse words were said by me to Ken at that point. <laughs> we saw from Anna's talk earlier, the um, Jeddah statue base. And this is an object that came in last summer. And students who are working on placement with me had the opportunity to repair some of the damage that had suffered over the years. So when the base came in, it was quite dirty. And there were lots of small chips to the plaster. And obviously being plaster, and with most of this being dark, the white plaster stood out very starkly. So what the students did, small infills in painting, clean the whole thing up and the base now, I think you'll all agree from having seen it, looks beautiful with the statue in place as well. And it's just absolutely great to see it together. And this is one of the best things about working with Egypt Centre is students get to see their work, not just disappear again, but to actually go on show, to be able to come round and see things that they've done to bring their family around and say to their friends, you know, I've done that. And it's a really great experience to be able to do that. Um, it's not just 
it's not just student work that we do. Um, over the years, the last sort of 25 years, I've done numerous commercial projects with the Egypt Centre as well. And this is one that came in a couple of years ago. Ashley Lingle, um, Dr. Ashley Lingle did the work on this project, looking at some of the finds and conserving these for display. And this vessel was one, well, funnily enough, I did see about 25 years ago in a storeroom um, in the university. And at the time I said, oh, that's got a bit of salt damage. And I don't think it sort of went any further than that. We said it needs to be moved away from the window out of the heat and the light that's causing the sort of fluctuating temperatures that is causing that to get worse. And finally, thanks to the AIM grant, it came in for conservation. When we got a closer look at it, we realized that it wasn't just salts that were the issue. You saw earlier where the stone staler, they'd applied a coating to it and that was causing damage. Exactly the same here. The slightly powdery pigment had led to the decision to apply a conservation film to the surface. Unfortunately, being stored as it was, the UV and the heat and the light caused that film to break down. And the side that was facing the window, you can see is very pitted. A lot of that decoration's gone. And you've almost got like a sort of waxy film peeling away from the surface. That's the polymer breaking down. Ashley identified this using FGIR analysis to probably be some sort of Beaver 371 film. And based on that, she knew she could take it down with solvents, but salts were still the issue as well. And with salts, what you need to do is you need to soak something to get those soluble salts back out. This has fragile decoration on. So Ashley had to coat the fragile decoration in a wax so that the water doesn't get to the decoration. Then she takes down the pot using solvents to sort of break down the adhesive that's there and gradually sort of takes the whole thing apart. Once the thing's in pieces, then the actual treatment can start. And there it is in pieces, and there it is afterwards. It went into treatment just before COVID hit, had eight weeks of um, salt removal, and came back out just in time for a long-term drying. Ashley was then able to put it all back together, and it's another vessel that's on display. But you can see the damage that's been done by that inappropriate sort of conservation treatment where the pitting, the decoration loss has happened over time. A few ongoing student projects now, um, and this is a bit of a teaser for the talk that um, we're going to be doing in February, I think it is, yep, um, for the Friends of the Egypt Centre. So again, I mentioned the students get the opportunity to talk about their projects as well and sort of give some information. We've got things like um, the stone vessel there, the dress that's come in for conservation where some work has been carried out, but again, a lot more needs to be done to make it stable for display. So this is my sort of pitch for come along in February and find out what we've been doing over the next few months or what the students have been doing over the next few months on these objects. And I'd just like to say thank you very much for listening. I know that's a very quick run through of everything we've done, but um, it's just like a sense of the range of objects we get to do and really the close working relationship with the Egypt Centre. And I hope I've credited all the students responsible for the work that was there. But just to say with some of the stuff, I have, you know, there's just been so many students I haven't been able to. But thank you to everybody who's worked on those objects. And, and again, thank you to the Egypt Centre staff for what is a sort of real two-way productive working relationship in terms of our students getting the benefit of working on objects and the Egypt Centre getting the benefit of objects coming through for display. And like I say, the collaborations in terms of research and presentations and things like that. So thank you again.